In the annals of American history, few figures embody the spirit of the early republic with as much vigor and conviction as James Monroe, the fifth president of the United States. Born into the modest agrarian landscapes of Westmoreland County, Virginia, on April 28, 1758, Monroe's life unfolded during a time of revolutionary change and fervent aspirations for liberty. We travel back to a time when the American colonies stood on the precipice of a profound transformation. Here, in this serene setting, young James Monroe grew up under the influence of the Enlightenment, a period marked by a burgeoning quest for knowledge and a radical rethinking of governance and personal freedoms. Monroe was the son of Spence and Elizabeth Monroe, who, though not wealthy, were part of the respected planter class. Their plantation, though modest, was Monroe's first universe, where he learned the values of hard work and responsibility. Education played a pivotal role in shaping the young Monroe. Initially tutored at home, his early schooling took place in the local parish school, a place where the curriculum was as much about classical studies as it was about the principles of liberty and justice that were beginning to stir across the colonies. It was in these formative years that Monroe first encountered the Enlightenment thinkers. The writings of Locke, Montesquieu, and Rousseau spoke of a world based on reason and democratic principles, a world Monroe would soon strive to make a reality. As Monroe matured, his academic journey took him to the College of William and Mary, the alma mater of many of America's revolutionary leaders. But his time there was cut short by the winds of war. By 1776, Monroe left his studies behind, compelled by a burgeoning sense of duty to join the burgeoning fight for American independence. The decision to join the Continental Army was a defining moment for Monroe. It was here, among the ranks of the nascent Republic's defenders, that he would find his calling, not just in leadership but in an unwavering commitment to the American cause. As the nation heaved under the yoke of British rule, Monroe's leadership qualities and his dedication to the revolutionary cause began to emerge. His courage and strategic insights during key battles would not only define his military career but also set the stage for his future in shaping the United States. From the tranquil fields of Westmoreland to the tumultuous battlegrounds of the Revolution, James Monroe's journey was not just a testament to his character but a mirror to the nation's own struggle for identity and independence. In the verdant expanses of Westmoreland County, Virginia, where the Potomac River meanders through forests and fields, James Monroe was born on the spring day of April 28, 1758. The youngest of several children in a family embedded in the life of plantation agriculture, Monroe's early life was shaped by the rhythms of rural existence and the profound legacy of the land. Here, amidst the fertile fields of his family's modest tobacco farm, Monroe's character was forged. His parents, Spence Monroe and Elizabeth Jones, were not among the wealthiest landowners, but they belonged to a respected class that valued honor, stewardship, and the burgeoning ideals of colonial independence. Under the guidance of his father, a sturdy planter himself, young Monroe learned the value of hard work, the rewards of diligence, and the importance of managing one's own land. These early lessons in responsibility and labor would imprint on Monroe a lifelong respect for the agrarian backbone of American society. Education was a pillar of the Monroe family ethos. Recognizing their son's keen intellect and potential, Monroe's parents ensured he received the finest education available at that time. He was enrolled in the local parish school, where he was introduced to the basics of reading, writing, and arithmetic, alongside the classical texts that kindled the fires of liberty in the hearts of many young Virginians. It was within the walls of Campbelltown Academy where Monroe's formal education took a significant leap forward. Here, he was exposed not only to advanced studies but also to the radical ideas of the Enlightenment. Thinkers like John Locke and Jean-Jacques Rousseau spoke of government by the consent of the governed, a revolutionary concept that resonated deeply with Monroe. Tragedy struck the Monroe household when James was just 16. The death of both his parents left him and his siblings in a precarious situation, thrusting young Monroe into the role of head of the family. This sudden thrust into adulthood tasked him with the management of the family estate and the care of his younger siblings. Faced with the weighty responsibilities of the estate and his family's welfare, Monroe exhibited a maturity and decisiveness beyond his years. 
These trials provided him with a profound understanding of the challenges faced by landowners and the working class alike, shaping his views on leadership and justice. Amidst these personal challenges, the political climate of the colonies was growing increasingly turbulent. The seeds of discontent with British rule were being sown, and Monroe felt the stirrings of patriotic duty that would soon call him away from his familial obligations to the broader cause of American independence. As young Monroe stood at the precipice of manhood, the colonies too stood on the brink of a profound transformation. The personal trials and the early education he received in Westmoreland County were not merely the backdrop of his youth but the forge of a future leader of a nation yet to be born. As the colonial resistance against British domination intensified, a young James Monroe, burning with the spirit of liberty instilled during his formative years, stepped forward to join the ranks of the Continental Army. The year was 1776, a year that would forever be etched in the annals of American history, not only as the birth of a nation but as the crucible in which its future leaders were forged. The stirrings of rebellion and the call for independence that echoed through the colonies found a ready respondent in Monroe who, compelled by a burgeoning sense of duty and the ideals of the Enlightenment, chose to leave his studies at the College of William and Mary to take up arms for the American cause. Joining the 3rd Virginia Regiment as a lieutenant, Monroe quickly found himself thrust into the harsh realities of war. His initial engagements were in the brutal winter campaigns, where the young soldiers battled not only the British forces but also the biting cold and rampant disease. Monroe's first major test came at the Battle of Harlem Heights, where he displayed remarkable bravery and tactical acumen. Under the command of General George Washington, Monroe learned the art of war, leadership, and the grim cost of freedom. His valor and leadership skills did not go unnoticed. Monroe's actions during these early battles earned him rapid promotions and the trust of his superiors. However, it was during the audacious crossing of the Delaware River and the subsequent surprise attack on Trenton where Monroe's military career was defined. The night of December 25, 1776, saw Monroe and his compatriots navigate the icy waters of the Delaware. Amidst the perilous crossing, Monroe exemplified the resolve and courage that would become his hallmark. The ensuing Battle of Trenton was a turning point for the Continental forces and for Monroe personally. During the fierce combat at Trenton, Monroe was seriously wounded, a musket ball striking him in the shoulder. His survival was miraculous, a testament to his resilience and the urgent battlefield medical attention he received. The injury sidelined Monroe from frontline duties but did not quell his spirit. During his recovery, he pondered the sacrifices made for liberty and the vision of an independent America, reflections that would deeply influence his later political convictions. As Monroe convalesced, the revolutionary cause continued to face dire challenges. Yet, these challenges only served to harden Monroe's resolve. Upon his return to service, he found himself in the dire winter encampment at Valley Forge, a place of immense suffering and steadfast determination. Valley Forge was not merely a military encampment, it was a crucible in which the metal of the American spirit was tested. Monroe, amidst the squalor and the camaraderie of his fellow soldiers, came to truly understand the depth and the stakes of the struggle for independence. From the verdant fields of Westmoreland County to the bloody battlegrounds of the Revolution, Monroe's early military experiences shaped not just a soldier but a future president. A leader whose resolve was tempered in the fires of conflict and whose vision for America was as steadfast as his service. After the smoke of the battlefield had cleared, a new chapter began for James Monroe as he embarked on a transformative journey under the mentorship of Thomas Jefferson. In the year 1780, amidst the ongoing struggles of a nascent America fighting for its place among nations, Monroe turned his focus towards the law, under the guidance of one of the Republic's most esteemed statesmen. Under the verdant slopes of Monticello, Thomas Jefferson, then the governor of Virginia, took Monroe under his wing. This relationship, formed on the ideals of the Enlightenment and the crucible of revolution, would forge a lifelong bond between the two men, shaping the future of both Monroe and the United States. Monroe's legal studies were intense and comprehensive, covering not only the intricacies of Virginia law but also the broader philosophies underpinning the governance of a free society. 
Jefferson, a polymath and visionary, instilled in Monroe a deep appreciation for the ideals of liberty, justice, and the responsibilities of public service. At Monticello, Monroe was not merely a student of law but an apprentice in governance and diplomacy. The hours spent in Jefferson's library, amidst books on law, philosophy, and governance, were complemented by vigorous discussions that ranged from the practical to the philosophical. Through his mentorship, Jefferson also introduced Monroe to the intricate network of Virginia politics. This exposure was critical as Monroe began to carve his own path in public service. With Jefferson's endorsement, Monroe entered the political arena, bringing with him a nuanced understanding of the law, fortified by the practical experiences and ideals he had embraced during the Revolution. In 1782, Monroe took his first steps into elected office, serving in the Virginia Assembly. His legal background, combined with his revolutionary credentials, quickly established him as a formidable figure in Virginia's political landscape. Monroe's commitment to public service was further evidenced by his work on the Virginia Plan, which played a pivotal role in shaping the debates at the Constitutional Convention. Although he was not a delegate to the convention, Monroe's influence was felt through his correspondence and his ongoing discussions with Jefferson and other leaders. As America's constitutional framework was being debated, Monroe's insights into governance, shaped by Jefferson's mentorship, contributed to the evolving dialogue on federalism and the rights of states within the new union. The years spent under Jefferson's guidance were more than just an apprenticeship in law, they were a masterclass in the art of leadership and the responsibilities of shaping a country. Monroe emerged from this period not just equipped with legal expertise but imbued with a vision for America's future, a vision deeply influenced by his mentor's ideals of liberty and democratic governance. As the new American Republic took shape, James Monroe's ascent within the burgeoning political landscape was marked by a series of strategic roles that capitalized on his legal acumen, revolutionary credentials, and the diplomatic finesse he had honed under Thomas Jefferson. Monroe's journey from a student of law to a leader of the nation was shaped by his early political experiences in Virginia, setting the stage for his national and international influence. In the early 1780s, as Virginia grappled with the aftermath of the Revolutionary War and the challenges of forming a new government, James Monroe stepped into the political arena, his ambitions fueled by a profound commitment to the principles of the newly established Union. Elected to the Virginia Assembly in 1782, Monroe quickly distinguished himself as a legislator who was deeply engaged with the key issues of the time, including the navigation rights of the Potomac River and the debate over the Articles of Confederation. His advocacy for strong state rights, balanced with the need for a unified national government, positioned him as a thoughtful and influential figure. Monroe's legislative work caught the eye of national leaders, leading to his election to the Continental Congress in 1783. During his tenure, he tackled pressing issues facing the nascent republic, from foreign debts to territorial disputes, demonstrating a keen understanding of both domestic and international politics. In Congress, Monroe advocated for the expansion and securement of American territories, an issue that would later define much of his political legacy. His efforts were instrumental in the discussions that led to the Northwest Ordinance of 1787, which established a method for admitting new states to the Union from the Northwest Territory. As Monroe's stature grew, so did his responsibilities. In 1790, he took a pivotal role as a U.S. Senator, aligning himself with the Anti-Federalists who championed the cause of states' rights against the perceived overreach of federal authority. His time in the Senate was marked by his opposition to policies he viewed as threatening to the balance of power essential to the Republic's health. Monroe's commitment to public service also extended beyond the legislative chambers. In 1794, he was appointed as the United States Minister to France, a crucial role amidst the turbulent times of the French Revolution. Monroe's sympathies with the French cause and his diplomatic skills endeared him to the French but also caused friction with the Washington administration, leading to his eventual recall. Despite the controversies, Monroe's time in France deepened his understanding of international relations and reinforced his advocacy for an American foreign policy that prioritized national sovereignty and non-interference. Through his roles as legislator, 
diplomat, and senator, Monroe shaped and was shaped by the young American Republic. His early political career was not just a prelude but a foundational period that prepared him for the highest offices of the United States. In the complex tapestry of early American politics, James Monroe carved a dual niche for himself as both a seasoned legislator and a skilled diplomat. His career trajectory during these formative years not only demonstrated his versatility and commitment to the newly established republic but also set the stage for his influential roles on the international stage. Following his impactful terms in the Virginia Assembly and the Continental Congress, Monroe's keen understanding of the intricacies of governance and international relations led him back to the Virginia State Legislature and eventually to the national stage as a U.S. Senator. As a legislator, Monroe was deeply involved in the major issues of his time, championing the rights of states while navigating the delicate balance required to forge a unified national identity. His legislative work was marked by a profound dedication to expanding the frontiers of the young nation, ensuring the security and prosperity of its citizens. In 1794, the complexities of international diplomacy called upon Monroe's service in a new capacity. Appointed as the United States Minister to France during a tumultuous period of French revolutionary fervor, Monroe was thrust into the vortex of European politics. In France, Monroe's diplomatic skills were tested as never before. His mission was to strengthen the Franco-American alliance while navigating the ideological shifts that the French Revolution engendered. Monroe's sympathetic stance towards the French cause endeared him to the revolutionary government, but it also stirred controversies that echoed back across the Atlantic, straining U.S.-France relations under the Federalist administration at home. Despite facing significant challenges, including the delicate task of managing the aftermath of the Genet Affair and the complexities of the Jay Treaty, Monroe's tenure in France was marked by critical negotiations that shaped the future of American foreign policy. His efforts in France laid the groundwork for the Louisiana Purchase, although it would be years before fruition. Monroe's diplomacy illustrated his deep commitment to American expansion and security, balancing the ideals of liberty with the pragmatic demands of international relations. Upon his return to America, Monroe's diplomatic ventures continued as he took up the role of governor of Virginia. His time as governor was not merely a continuation of his political career but a reaffirmation of his dedication to public service, guiding Virginia through a period of peace and prosperity. Through his legislative and diplomatic endeavors, Monroe not only shaped the contours of American politics and international relations but also prepared himself for the highest echelons of American leadership. His experiences abroad and at home imbued him with a unique perspective on the challenges and responsibilities of governing a diverse and rapidly expanding nation. In the early years of the 19th century, as the United States continued to define its identity and refine its governance, James Monroe returned to Virginia to assume a role that would leverage his extensive experience in both domestic and international arenas. Elected as the governor of Virginia in 1799, Monroe's tenure was characterized by his visionary leadership and his steadfast commitment to the principles of the Republic. Assuming the governorship at a time of relative peace and growing prosperity, Monroe faced the dual challenge of maintaining stability while fostering the growth necessary to secure Virginia's future. His approach was both pragmatic and progressive, balancing the needs of his state with the broader objectives of the nation. During his three one-year terms, Monroe focused on improving the state's infrastructure, advocating for the construction of roads and canals to enhance trade and mobility. His forward-thinking policies helped to knit the Commonwealth more tightly into the fabric of the burgeoning United States, promoting economic growth and integration. But Monroe's governance was not without its trials. The year 1800 brought with it the challenge of the Gabriel Prosser Slave Rebellion, a profound and unsettling event that tested Monroe's leadership and the state's resolve. Faced with this crisis, Monroe acted decisively to quell the rebellion, balancing a firm response with a measured restraint to avoid widespread violence. His management of the rebellion's aftermath showcased his deep understanding of the delicate social fabric of Virginia, and his actions reflected a commitment to justice and order, pivotal in maintaining public trust during turbulent times. Beyond the challenges of infrastructure and security, Monroe also championed education, seeing it as fundamental to the Republic's health. 
he supported measures to improve educational access and quality, believing that a knowledgeable citizenry was essential to the preservation of liberty and the success of democratic governance. As governor, Monroe also maintained his interest in national affairs, using his position to influence broader policy discussions. His leadership in Virginia mirrored his later views as president, particularly his focus on national defense and foreign policy, always considering Virginia's role within the larger context of the United States. Monroe's tenure as governor of Virginia not only solidified his reputation as a capable leader but also deepened his understanding of American politics from a state and national perspective. His experiences during these formative years would prove invaluable as he later ascended to the highest office in the land. In the annals of American history, few events have transformed the landscape of the nation as dramatically as the Louisiana Purchase. As the early 19th century unfolded, James Monroe played a pivotal role in this monumental acquisition, which would double the size of the United States and set the stage for its emergence as a continental power. In 1803, President Thomas Jefferson appointed James Monroe as a special envoy to join forces with Robert R. Livingston in France. Their mission was to negotiate the purchase of New Orleans and the Floridas, territories critical for the control of the Mississippi River and the trade routes vital to America's economic growth. Upon arriving in Paris, Monroe discovered that circumstances had shifted dramatically. Napoleon Bonaparte, facing renewed war with Britain and financial difficulties, offered to sell not just New Orleans but all of Louisiana. This unexpected opportunity presented Monroe and Livingston with a decision of immense consequence. The decision to purchase the entire Louisiana Territory, over 828,000 square miles of land, was audacious and fraught with constitutional and political challenges. Yet, the vision of Monroe and his compatriots saw beyond these immediate hurdles to the profound impact this land could have on the future of the United States. The Louisiana Purchase was ratified later that year, and for the sum of $15 million, approximately four cents an acre, the United States secured a territory that would extend from the Gulf of Mexico to the Canadian border, from the Mississippi River to the Rocky Mountains. Monroe's role in this negotiation showcased not only his diplomatic acumen but also his deep commitment to the expansion and prosperity of the United States. This visionary act not only doubled the size of the nation but also set a precedent for future American expansionism. However, the purchase also deepened national debates over slavery, sovereignty, and the balance of power between federal and state governments. Monroe was acutely aware of these challenges, and his subsequent political career would continue to be influenced by the issues raised during this landmark deal. As America's landscape grew, so too did its challenges and opportunities. Monroe's involvement in the Louisiana Purchase not only marked a significant milestone in his career but also in the destiny of the nation, transforming it into a burgeoning empire of liberty. As the dawn of the 19th century brought the burgeoning United States into the tumult of global politics, James Monroe found himself once again on foreign soil, this time as the United States Minister to the United Kingdom. Appointed in 1803, Monroe's mission in London was pivotal, tasked with resolving festering maritime disputes and protecting burgeoning American interests in the shadow of the Napoleonic Wars. Monroe arrived in a city teeming with political intrigue and diplomatic maneuvering. His challenge was immense, to navigate the complex waters of British diplomacy and advocate for American sailors' rights, who were forcibly impressed into the British Navy, a practice that inflamed American public opinion and threatened the fragile peace between the two nations. With the Atlantic Ocean roiling with British warships and forcing their blockade against Napoleonic France, Monroe sought to negotiate the release of American sailors and secure favorable trade terms. His efforts were met with British resistance, testing his diplomatic skills and resilience. The stakes were high, and Monroe's role was a balancing act of diplomacy and firm advocacy. Each meeting with British officials was a step in a delicate dance of international relations, where Monroe had to assert the young republic's sovereignty while striving to maintain peace. Despite the challenges, Monroe's time in London was not without progress. His persistent efforts laid the groundwork for future diplomatic endeavors and provided the United States with crucial insights into European affairs. 
Yet, the impressment issue remained largely unresolved, foreshadowing the conflicts that would eventually lead to the War of 1812. Monroe's mission in the United Kingdom deepened his understanding of the intricacies of global power dynamics, an experience that would profoundly influence his future presidency, especially as he later crafted the Monroe Doctrine, shaping American foreign policy for generations. Returning to the United States in 1807, Monroe carried with him not just diplomatic experiences but also a reinforced vision for America's place in the world. His tenure in London, fraught with diplomatic challenges, had honed his resolve and his commitment to safeguarding American interests on the global stage. As the United States grappled with the tumult of the War of 1812, James Monroe assumed the formidable roles of Secretary of State and, briefly, Secretary of War, marking a period of profound leadership and critical decision-making in the face of national adversity. Appointed Secretary of State by President James Madison in 1811, Monroe was thrust into a maelstrom of diplomatic challenges and military crises. The nation, still in its infancy, faced threats from British forces and ongoing conflicts on its frontiers. Monroe's tenure was defined by his diplomatic agility and strategic foresight. Internationally, he navigated the precarious waters of alliances, while domestically, he managed the severe implications of a British blockade that strangled American trade and fueled regional unrest. The British invasion of Washington in 1814 marked a dire moment for the young republic. In response, Monroe took on an additional mantle as Secretary of War, demonstrating an unprecedented commitment to national defense. He organized militias, fortified defenses, and orchestrated a coherent military response that breathed new life into American resistance. Monroe's direct involvement in military operations underscored his leadership qualities. His efforts were crucial during the defense of the capital and in subsequent battles, notably contributing to the morale-boosting American victory at the Battle of New Orleans. Beyond the battlefield, Monroe played a pivotal role in the diplomatic resolution of the war. He was instrumental in the negotiations leading to the Treaty of Ghent, which formally ended hostilities in December 1814. His diplomacy ensured that American sovereignty was upheld and that territorial integrity was maintained, setting a precedent for future international relations. As peace returned, Monroe's experience as a Secretary of State and War profoundly influenced his views on national security and foreign policy. These roles not only tested his resolve but also prepared him for the highest office in the land. Monroe's adept handling of both diplomatic and military challenges during one of America's most perilous times left a lasting legacy. His leadership during the War of 1812 reinforced his stature as a staunch defender of American independence and a visionary statesman, shaping the course of the nation's history. As America turned a new leaf after the War of 1812, James Monroe ascended to the presidency in 1817, ushering in what would be known as the Era of Good Feelings. This period, marked by a sense of national unity and political calm, highlighted Monroe's impact as a unifier and visionary leader during a transformative time in the nation's history. Monroe's presidency began with a grand tour of the states, an unprecedented move that reinforced the sense of unity and collective identity among the American people. Traveling from the bustling cities of the Northeast to the expanding frontiers of the West, Monroe was met with enthusiasm and optimism, symbolizing a nation united after years of conflict and partisan strife. At the heart of Monroe's agenda was the fortification of national defense and the promotion of an American system of economic policy. Championed by his Secretary of State, Henry Clay, this system aimed to support internal improvements, protect U.S. industries with tariffs, and maintain a robust national bank. These initiatives reflected Monroe's commitment to fostering economic independence and infrastructural growth across the burgeoning nation. Monroe's domestic policies were largely successful, but it was his foreign policy that would define much of his legacy. In 1823, he announced the Monroe Doctrine, a pivotal moment in American foreign affairs. This doctrine declared that the Western Hemisphere was no longer open for European colonization and that any intervention by external powers would be seen as an act of aggression, requiring U.S. intervention. The announcement of the Monroe Doctrine resonated globally, positioning the United States as a protector of the New World against Old World monarchies. 
it was a bold assertion of national sovereignty and a clear signal of America's growing confidence on the international stage. Monroe's presidency was not without its challenges, however. The issue of slavery began to cast a long shadow over American politics, and debates over the admission of new states from the territories acquired during his administration often revolved around the balance of power between slaveholding and free states. These debates foreshadowed the severe sectional conflicts that would erupt in the following decades. As Monroe concluded his second term, he left a nation that was economically stronger and more assertive in its international posture than when he took office. Despite emerging domestic tensions, his tenure had fostered a significant period of national cohesion and prosperity. The era of good feelings thus remains a testament to Monroe's leadership, a time when America, under his stewardship, strived to realize its promise of unity and prosperity amidst the challenges of a complex and evolving world. Amidst the tranquility of a nation growing in confidence and stature, President James Monroe, in December of 1823, delivered a message to Congress that would forever alter the course of American foreign policy. This declaration, known as the Monroe Doctrine, articulated a bold new vision for the role of the United States in global affairs, particularly concerning the Western Hemisphere. Monroe's address was a response to increasing European interests in reasserting their influence in the Americas. The doctrine, crafted with the intellectual partnership of his Secretary of State, John Quincy Adams, warned European nations against further colonization and intervention in the Western Hemisphere, asserting it as a sphere of American interest. The implications of the Monroe Doctrine were profound. It positioned the United States as the protector of the New World against Old World encroachments, effectively declaring the Americas off-limits to future European colonization. This policy was a preemptive strike against imperial ambitions and a statement of emerging American hegemony in its own right. Though initially met with skepticism and even dismissal by some European powers, the Monroe Doctrine gradually became a cornerstone of American foreign policy, a declaration of its coming of age on the international stage. It was a policy of deterrence, a philosophical line in the sand that would guide the United States through countless diplomatic challenges in the centuries to follow. Domestically, the doctrine bolstered Monroe's popularity and further unified the nation under a banner of Pan-American solidarity. It resonated with the American public's spirit of nationalism and manifest destiny, aligning with the nation's broader aspirations for growth and self-determination. Yet, the Monroe Doctrine also foreshadowed complex future engagements and conflicts. It set a precedent for American intervention in the Western Hemisphere that would evolve and expand in scope, reflecting the nation's growing power and the complexities of its international responsibilities. As Monroe concluded his presidency, the doctrine stood as a testament to his and Adams' visionary foreign policy. It was a commitment to defend not just American interests but those of emerging republics in the Americas, promising support against old world hegemonies. As James Monroe's presidency drew to a close in 1825, the twilight years of his life unfolded with a return to his Virginia roots. His retirement was marked by personal reflection, continued public engagement, and the inevitable reckoning with both his achievements and the challenges that remained for the nation he had helped to shape. Settling back into the rhythms of a state life, Monroe faced a variety of challenges that mirrored those of many founding fathers. His finances were strained, a testament to the often personal costs of a life dedicated to public service. Despite these difficulties, Monroe remained a figure of significant influence and respect, sought out by both political leaders and private citizens for his wisdom and experience. In his retirement, Monroe was not isolated from the issues of the day. He stayed abreast of national affairs and was particularly concerned with the ongoing debates over the Missouri Compromise and the future of the Union. Monroe's deep commitment to the American experiment compelled him to remain engaged, offering insights that were shaped by decades of service at the nation's helm. Monroe's later years were also a time for personal stocktaking and reconnecting with family. He spent his days surrounded by loved ones, including his daughters and grandchildren, who brought him great joy and comfort as he navigated the complexities of aging and legacy. Health challenges eventually slowed Monroe, as they do for all. His final public act was a poignant testament to his enduring sense of duty and patriotism. 
In 1831, he moved to New York City to live with his daughter Maria Hester Monroe Gouverneur, seeking better medical care and the companionship of family during his declining years. James Monroe passed away on July 4, 1831, joining Thomas Jefferson and John Adams in the remarkable coincidence of founding fathers dying on the anniversary of the nation's independence. His death was marked by national mourning and widespread reflection on his contributions to the United States. Monroe's legacy, encapsulated by the Monroe Doctrine and his leadership during critical periods of American history, left an indelible imprint on the nation. His vision for America's role in the world and his commitment to the principles of the Republic endured well beyond his years, influencing generations of leaders and citizens alike. As the sun set on the life of James Monroe, his enduring contributions continued to resonate through the corridors of American history. His presidency, defined by the era of good feelings and the monumental Monroe Doctrine, left a legacy that would shape the nation's destiny well beyond his years. Monroe's tenure as president is often celebrated for its strong advocacy for national unity and an expanded continental vision. His leadership helped to solidify the foundations of American foreign policy and domestic growth during a critical period of the nation's development. The Monroe Doctrine, perhaps his most lasting legacy, has been invoked by numerous presidents and policymakers in the centuries following his presidency. It established the United States as a dominant force in the Western Hemisphere and laid the groundwork for future American interventionism, shaping the nation's role on the global stage. Domestically, Monroe's push for the American system and internal improvements catalyzed significant developments in infrastructure and economic growth. His vision for a unified, economically robust America helped to foster a sense of national identity and purpose that spurred further westward expansion and industrialization. Yet, Monroe's legacy is also complex and marked by the era's contradictions, especially regarding slavery. While he presided over a period of relative harmony, the seeds of division were sown under his watch, particularly with the Missouri Compromise, which temporarily quelled but eventually escalated tensions that would lead to the Civil War. In personal terms, Monroe was remembered as a man of integrity and dedication. His commitment to public service and his belief in the American experiment influenced not only his own generation but also those that followed, imbuing the office of the presidency with a sense of solemn duty and visionary leadership. Today, Monroe's contributions are memorialized in numerous ways, from monuments and place names across the country to the ongoing scholarly debates about his policies and their impacts. His life and work remain a critical part of the narrative of the United States, a testament to his role in shaping the nation during its formative years. As we reflect on the life and legacy of James Monroe, the fifth president of the United States, we see a figure whose influence has woven deeply into the fabric of American history. Monroe's presidency, marked by significant achievements and complex challenges, set a course that would influence the nation's trajectory for generations. Monroe's administration, from the acquisition of Florida to the formulation of the Monroe Doctrine, was a period of both consolidation and expansion. It was under his leadership that the United States truly began to find its footing both domestically and on the international stage. The era of good feelings, as it came to be known, is often idealized as a time of national unity and political calm. Yet, it was also a period where the seeds of future conflicts were sown particularly around the issues of slavery and states' rights. Monroe's policies and decisions reflected the complexities of governing a rapidly growing and increasingly divided nation. Monroe's enduring legacy is perhaps best encapsulated by the Monroe Doctrine, a policy that has been interpreted and reinterpreted over the centuries. This doctrine not only asserted American sovereignty but also set a precedent for the United States' role as a global protector of democratic values. Beyond the grand strokes of policy and doctrine, Monroe's life reflects the quintessential American story of resilience and public service. From his humble beginnings in Westmoreland County, Virginia, to the highest office in the land, Monroe dedicated his life to his country, a commitment that continued even into his retirement and final years. Today, as we walk through the landscapes Monroe once inhabited, visit the institutions he helped shape, and study the documents he signed, we are reminded of his profound impact on the course of American history. 
his vision and decisions continue to resonate, influencing not just the path of the nation he served, but also the ideals of leadership and governance. In concluding our exploration of James Monroe's life, we recognize a legacy that is both inspiring and instructive. His journey from soldier to statesman encapsulates the spirit of an era, and his leadership during times of change and challenge speaks to the enduring qualities necessary for national leadership.